Get some back so can... Okay, this is the perimeter formula. When you guys first learn perimeter in elementary school, they teach you that you're just adding up all of the outside of a shape, right? Yeah. If it's perimeter of a rectangle, there is a formula that we can use that makes this a little bit easier than just adding everything. We would The perimeter formula is two times the length plus two times the width. And the example in our book is asking us to solve this or rewrite it in terms of W. So we want to get the W by itself instead of having right now the P being by itself. In other words, if you were given some numbers, like if they gave you the perimeter and they gave you the length, but they didn't give you the width, you could redo this to find the width by doing what we're doing. We're just going to play with it without knowing what those numbers are. First thing I want to do is subtract the 2L. If I'm trying to get this to be for the width, I want to get everything away from the W. And we start with the term that is not connected to it. So now we have perimeter minus 2L is equal to 2W. Why is it 2L and 2W? Because on a rectangle there's two lengths and there's two widths. I want this by itself. What's with it? And it's being multiplied, so we want to. And if I divide it from this side, I also have to divide it from this side. We're going to rewrite this as perimeter minus 2 length divided by 2 is equal to width. And you might be thinking, why aren't we getting rid of the 2s? Because 2 over 2 is... We can only do that if the perimeter also had a 2. If I'm going to take this 2 and divide it by this 2, I have to also do it to this. And there's no 2 there. So that just stays as it is. And if you think about it in terms of the perimeter formula, we do have two lengths and we do have two widths, right? So leaving those twos in there keeps it as that formula, even though it's in a different format. Let's go back to our paper, and we're going to try try it number three. It says, write the formula for the area of a triangle. Area equals one half base times height in terms of h. So it wants us to solve it for just the h. What are we going to do with the fraction? Multiply it by its. Okay, so I'm going to surround this whole thing over here with 2 over 1. And that means I have to do the same on the left side of the equation. So we're going to have 2a on the left is equal to the base times the height. It asked us to solve for the height. What do I need to get rid of? The B. And how am I going to get rid of it? Divide. divide it. And so 2A divided by B is equal to the height. So 2 times the area divided by the base equals the height. With that, I'm going to have you guys do some practice problems. And I want to tell you straight up, this can be really challenging. I'm a visual person, so sometimes what I do when I'm solving these, and there's a lot of variables, I will highlight the letter that I'm being asked to solve for so that I know that's the one that has to stay and everything else has to move away from it. You can circle it or something, or just keep working with it if it doesn't bother you to have all of these there. But today's problems that, again, tomorrow I want you to come in with questions on ones that you struggle with. So, like, make some form of notation that you're working on these problems on your own, whether it's here in class, and you can ask me when you're here, or if you're finishing at home, maybe you put a star next to ones you want to ask me about or a question mark, or if you're a color person, have a highlighter that you, like, 
put something on so that when you come in tomorrow, you're ready to say, show us how to do this one because I didn't get it. Okay? So, again, today I want you guys to practice numbers 13 through 23. And I want to show you what these look like in your book. Go ahead and turn to the next page. We're solving each equation for the indicated variable. What variable is indicated in number 13? The C. Do you see how it's after that semicolon? That's the one that they want you to solve for. So you're going to start off with B divided by C equals A. And you're going to move stuff in the equation around so that C is by itself equal to the rest. Okay? 